Okay, so I'm here with Ryan, and for the students in uh, CT101, Ryan's going to be signing up for his Reclaim hosting account as well, so we're going to use his sign up as a tutorial for you. Um, when you click on the link that was sent in the email uh, to the whole class, that automatically takes you to the um, <laughs> To uh, the client area, and what that's going to do is it's going to pre-fill in the coupon code. But the first thing you have to do is, is uh, pick your domain name. Um, and Ryan, you get to pick a domain name. Wow! Do you have one that you, you all, have in mind? All of this, all of this pressure, all of a sudden. I think I have something in mind. Okay, why don't for you? A, why don't for you? a side project? Let's let's see if it, it'll work. So we'll check availability. For graffitianimation.com. It's available. Wow. Good, good luck. <laughs> right off the bat. Hit it right. So we're gonna check out now. And you're gonna skip ID protection because Tim Owens is giving that to us for free. So you don't have to add ID protection. Um, thank you, Tim Owens, and thank you, Reclaim Hosting. Uh, what you see here is a $45 amount, but that's because Ryan is doing a faculty account. Yours will say $25. And you'll see that uh, it's still you owe no money. If you see you owe $7, that's because you did click that uh, checkbox for ID protection, and you'll need to uncheck that. Ryan's going to uh, fill in his stuff, and we're going to go, go through this uh, quickly, because then we're going to go to the C panel. Okay. So why don't you just do that? Cool. Very important you get an email address uh, correct. If you make a mistake in your email address, you're not going to get any of the no notifications. Uh, from Reclaim Hosting. You have to still register a credit card or a PayPal account even if you're not going to owe anything right now. So one of the things you actually can do is create a PayPal account with nothing in it uh, for free and just use that if you don't have a credit card. There we go. All right, you should see your order confirmation. That means you should get your order number but also an email with all your information. Now, um, so right, we're going to go right off the bat, we're going to go to the client area of Reclaim Hosting and um, you have one, he has one account, one domain, um, and you'll see your account information, which I'm going to blur out. What you want to go to now is the cPanel, all right? The cPanel, this is the cPanel, and you can watch some of the uh, uh, Getting Started uh, Wizard uh, videos to show you about how the cPanel works. You'll see your domain name mm -hmm. to the left, and then you'll see what's called the home directory. This is where it exists, the, your content exists on a server that's run by Reclaim Hosting. You'll see uh, disk storage space, I think of a gigabyte. Uh, Ryan, as a faculty account, has more. But this is what we call the, this is the system administration interface. This is where you get to choose to do a lot of things with your web hosting account, including going to the file manager, which is, um, whoops, which is right here. The file manager is where you can actually upload files and, 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 and FTP thing. But what we're focused on is app, web applications, and you're going to be installing an instance of WordPress which is really straightforward to do, and we're going to do that right now. Cool. I, and I just, I just logged in my information, so I took down my username, my password, my domain name, um, and just to make a note of that. Right. So yeah, it's, it's very important that you maintain your account password. So you now have an account with Reclaim Hosting, yes. and uh, that serves to get you to log into the cPanel, but when we install this WordPress application, you're going to have to create a new username and password uh, for your WordPress install. So you have your account with Reclaim Hosting as one username and password, and then your website install of WordPress is another uh, username and password. Um, and so we're going to click to install this application. And right now it goes to the main domain, which for you guys I encourage you to do. You can do things like you could create a subdomain and you could create blog.graffitianimation.com, but you'd have to do that first and then you could install to blog, uh, install the WordPress installation to a subdomain. You could also do it to uh, graffitianimation forward slash uh, graffitianimation.com forward slash blog, but for, for now, we're just going to do it um, right to the root, to the, the, the top level domain, uh, to, the, to the main domain. Um, and we're, we're going to scroll down to uh, setting a new uh, username and password. It gives this default username and password, which it would send to you, but I encourage you to pick your own username that you, uh, and password. Oh. 
All right. You can also give your website it's a title and a tagline, but if you don't if you don't know what you want to do, you can always change that later. All right. You will need to have some content in the title. The tagline, you don't have to have something. Um, and so with these values filled, uh, remembering that title and tagline can be changed after it's installed, we can say um, install. We need to choose an install directory, let's say. Uh, oh, no, it worked. No, I thought it was doing it. So, now we're watching uh, the installation happen, and when it's done, you have these pieces of information. So this is the site. This is to log into the back end. That's where your new username and password for WordPress is, uh, is going to be used to log in. And so it's every uh, WordPress ins installation, uh, the login uh, URL is the the site's URL forward slash WP dash admin. So we're actually, we can look at, we're going to look at both real quickly. So the front facing, you know you're successful when you see it. It's like, hello world. That's the default post that you're going to edit um, and talk about your experience with you getting through this process. Um, and there's a couple other prompts that I think in Reflection 5. So you edit that post and then you submit your, your you copy and paste your domain name and submit it to the, to the site. Uh, that's linked in the uh, post five to the form. So every Ryan and I will know which uh, domain names go with which student. Um, so let's. But we also could log into the word uh, WP admin, and this is going to once you it auto logged it in. I guess it remember it remember that for the first time it auto logs you in. Yeah. I guess, um, and this should be familiar to you now because you this is where you've been doing posts for the past two weeks, and so you can see all posts. And you'll see that hello world post, and you can edit it, and um, you can you can you can give it a new title and type in here just like you have. And but now you have to maintain your own categories, so uh, you you should make that uh, weekly reflection five. I think that's what it is. We can double check. Yep, it's uh, weekly reflection five. So you can even, just to be safe, you can copy and paste that text from the site. And that'll be a new, because that's going to feed into, and paste, add that category, and uncheck on categories. So when you, when you edit this and update it, so you know, uh, got my site up, <laughs> all right, um, and then you're going to continue into here, whoops. Um, and, and, and update this. And then once it's updated, what we're going to be doing is this is now where you're going to do all your, your, your blog posts from now on for the rest of the semester. And we're going to take them and feed them into ct101.us and take your posts and assign them to your existing author role in uh, the ct101.us. And so then your posts are going to exist in two places. Um, and, you know, people, we haven't decided whether we're going to have when it clicks on your post, whether it goes back to your site, and I think we're going to do that more people comment there. Okay. Cause on we their really, site. Yeah, because we want the comments to exist on your site. It's going to make it tough to follow a track commenting, but I have some ideas of how to do that. I, there's some code. We might create a, an aggregator of comments. I think that's possible. So we can see who's commenting where stuff. Cool. cool. All right. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Uh, we're going to put this right up so everybody can see it, and I'll put it out in an email. See you guys on Monday face-to-face. Bye-bye. Take care.